Hey everybody, Oli here for the weekly news recap for the 20th and the 26th of February 2023. So, we'll jump into it. This week, uh, Sony had a state of play that was generally <laughs> underwhelming, I think, is the general consensus. Um, I did a full watch along with it uh, on the stream on Thursday. If you want to check that out, the VOD is over on YouTube. Um, We'll go through some of the games, I'm not going to go through all of them, because again, you can just watch that video to go through everything, but I'm going to pick out some of the ones that I found interesting, and some of the ones I found very disappointing. Um, so The Foglands is the first one I wanted to take a look at. Um, right, anyway, so The Foglands is a PSVR 2 title, um, the state of play opened with a bunch of PSVR 2 titles. Um, and what's interesting here in the Foglands is one is the art style is kind of interesting. It is another first person shootery type thing, which a lot of VR games are now, which is disappointing to say the least. Could you kind of do something else? But this one looks kind of interesting. I think it's got a bit of a, a roguelike element to it. You have this character who has a bunch of tarot cards, which might suggest randomization. Um, on the different rounds, perhaps, that you uh, go through in this game. I think the idea is you're heading out into the Foglands to collect resources and what have you, um, and then you need to make it back to some home base before the fog overtakes you. Um, it kind of feels like it has a bit of a loop to it, like a roguelike loop to it. Again, this is looking fairly, you know, pre-rendered CG stuff, so how much of this is actual gameplay? How much of this is... How the game itself actually plays debatable um if it plays like this it would be very impressive i kind of get the opinion that it won't but anyway we'll see um after the foglands there was green hell vr um green hell is a survival title where you are effectively just thrown into the amazon it's like good luck figure it out um i don't particularly like survival games that much so it's kind of gonna Go right past that one. Um, Synapse. Again, I know I was complaining that, hey, these guys look like they're just first-person shooters. Can you guys do something different? And they do do something different, even if it is still a first-person shooter. Synapse has an interesting art direction. Um, as you can see, it's all fairly monochromatic until you start using your abilities. Um, so you do have these kind of telekinetic abilities off your left hand. Or your right hand is the gun. I imagine there'll be an option to swap those for anyone who's left-handed and would rather shoot with their left hand. Um, he also reloaded by putting the magazine into the rock there, which is interesting as well. I kind of like this because it's pretty fast-paced. Um, a lot of the first-person VR titles so far have been pretty slow, uh, whereas this one seems pretty quick. Um, we get to the... Yeah, okay, so... And really, it's the telekinesis stuff that's doing it for me. Like, you pick the guy up and shooting him as he disappears, you know, throw the guy off the rock and so on. It, yeah, I like this. This seems like it'll be really fun. Uh, and hopefully it will be. Anyway, that's Synapse. Um, sometime this year. We don't know when. Uh, Journey to Foundation is meant to be based on Isaac Asimov's Foundation book. Um, books, possibly. I don't know. Never read them. Never watched a TV show, etc. Again, this is one that does look kind of slow-paced, so I don't know how well it will translate, but hopefully it'll be okay. Uh, Before Your Eyes is a port. Uh, the game itself is already out on PC VR, um, and the port will be coming to PC VR 2. No, PS VR 2, uh, on the 10th of March. Uh, so Before Your Eyes is a story-driven game where the game will only progress when you blink. Um, and since the PS VR 2 has eye tracking, it knows when you blink. Um, Destiny 2, moving on. We already know what I how I feel about Destiny. Uh, Chia, which apparently is how this game is pronounced. Um, so Chia is a New Caledonia developed game. Uh, the developers from New Caledonia. Um, Chia, the main character who you play, is able to body jump. So she's able to jump from her own body into the body of other animals. Uh, so she can jump into like a dolphin or. Uh, a bird or the you know that kind of crab etc to you know do interesting platforming and what have you uh it's very colorful it's a very charming looking game um but kind of the more interesting thing is one the game's been in development forever it seems um but one of the more interesting things it's going to launch uh day one into um 
PlayStation Plus, like Stray did. So, has it been like almost an entire year since Stray did that? Hey, Melwan, how's it going? Happy Sunday. It feels like it. When did Stray come out? <laughs> like it was last year, but was it literally March of last year? I don't think so. I think it was much later in the year. Anyway, it's been a while since they've actually leveraged PlayStation Plus to have a, a day one launch. Uh, unlike Game Pass, that seems to get them every month. Whatever. Anyway, we'll see. Since it'll be free, effectively free, I mean, you pay for PlayStation Plus, obviously. Um, you know, more people will get a chance to play it, and it does look kind of charming, and it has a little bit of Breath of the Wild to it. More than a little bit of Breath of the Wild to it. Anyway, that's Chia. Um, Humanity is uh, the game, again, that's also been in development for a while. It's the people behind Res and Tetris Effect, so you know it's going to be pretty weird looking. Uh, Humanity is a... Lemmings, basically. If you remember the old PC Lemmings game, it's that. But you're a dog this time. Uh, you're a Shiba Inu with a hilarious running animation uh, that's trying to ferry people to not their death. Uh, Goodbye Volcano High is a really well animated coming of age teen thing, except your dinosaurs. Um, just think uh, Night in the Woods kind of thing, but a bit younger. Teenage Generation. Naruto cross Waruto, as I, I think I said that um, during the stream. Wah! Believe it. Uh, that would be a much better game. I would play that. Anyway, Naruto stuff. Uh, Baldur's Gate. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is launching on PS5 as well. So same day it comes out of Early Access on PC. Uh, it will be playable on PS5 as well. I've been really looking forward to this ever since the rumors that there was a Baldur's Gate 3, never mind the announcement, the rumors from it, because Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 are incredible uh, uh, CRPGs, and I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, and it's pretty good that it's going to launch on a console as well, because I don't have a PC that would be able to handle it. Um, so yeah, that is good shit. Uh, also, if you have already bought, if you're in the early access program for Baldur's Gate, uh, you will get all of the Deluxe Edition stuff for free, effectively. So if you wanted to, you can go buy into Early Access now and do it that way. Um, there's a bit of an added wrinkle in that it's not coming to Xbox. But for some weird shenanigans, which we'll get to in the industry bullshit part. But yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 coming uh, the end of August. It has an actual release date, the worst possible release date, which is August 31st. <laughs> the very, very end of August. Anyway... Gotta wait a little bit longer, it seems. Uh, Wayfinder is MMO Diablo. It's got a very chunky uh, fantasy art style to it, because it's John Madueira's airship, in uh, airship Syndicate, and he did uh, Darksiders, Battle Chasers. They have very chunky, heavy metal fantasy kind of things. Uh, I do like his art. The game itself, I don't think so, though. Uh, Street Fighter 6 announced some more characters, so new, uh, not new, uh, classic characters Zangief and Kami are returning, and then new character Lily, who has two clubs. Didn't think they allowed weapons in Street Fighter, but here we are. Uh, Resident Evil 4 remake got another trailer, so I'm not going to watch, because I don't want to, any more spoilers. Um, but a demo is coming soon for it, so you've got that to look forward to. And then the big feature of the night, um which was Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League, deep dive, lots of different videos, and behind the scenes commentary on how the game's gonna play and so on, and boy, boy did it show its whole ass on stream. Um, immediately when I saw, when it cuts to actual gameplay, I just went, that's Fortnite. I'm looking at Fortnite. And I kind of got that sense of it uh, in the kind of small snippets of gameplay we had seen ahead of time, but it was just very, very obvious now, um, particularly in the behind the scenes stuff. We skip to actual gameplay, that'd be good. Gameplay, 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 all right, anyway. It's just very floaty, very floaty jumps. All four characters play exactly the same. Like they have some very small differences about them, but for the most part, they're identical. Like Captain Boomerang barely uses his boomerang. You know, King Shark barely is, uses his shark face to do things and so on. You know, they all play kind of the exact same. Um, it doesn't go into the UI in this trailer. It's in another video where they go into the UI, but the UI is Destiny. You know, it's got that really slow mouse reticle on a console deal. 
that everybody is using for getting there's a reason they were using it and it's because they couldn't think of something better like i hate that ui minimalism that's infected so many games at this point even god of war has it like why kratos is supposed to be this mythical god thing he shouldn't have this weird minimalist mouse cursor ui thing anyway uh, somebody else remarked that we're in a game about the Justice League and all we're doing is running around shooting things. Like we do in every game, basically, at the moment. So yeah, it's got a lot of Crackdown and Fortnite and Destiny to it, which is all... What are you doing, Rocksteady? I'm not sure people would be as pissed off about... I'm not pissed off, I think people are more disappointed that this is the same developer, ostensibly, that made the Arkham... What everyone wants to call the Arkham Trilogy, but it, there's actually four games. That they just don't want to talk about it. It's actually five games. They just don't want to talk about them. It's just super disappointing because this has been a development for a really long time. You're we kind of hoping that it would be another Arkham. Just like bigger four player Arkham thing. And it's not. It's Fortnite. It's Fortnite Destiny Crackdown. It's a superhero game where you don't play the superheroes. Which could be interesting, but not like this. You know, it could be interesting in the way that these e car these enemies would be super overpowered and you'd have to like really like survival trying to fight Superman kind of thing. Like one false step and you're fucking dead kind of thing. Instead, you're gathering loot and adding plus 2% to your armor against robots kind of shit, you know? This isn't the Justice League. Where is Superman and, and Batman and, and Green Lantern and Wonder Woman and so on? Wonder Woman does show up in the trailer, but... It's just really disappointing. This could be any game. Really? What makes this the Justice League? Etc. Et anyway, I was very disappointed by it and it really soured the whole state of play. Not that the state of play itself was particularly... Um, impressive. It was mostly games we already knew about or games that are way in the future. Except for Chia. Could you, Chia being free on PlayStation Plus was good. I did like that. Anyway, that was uh, the state of play for this week. <laughs> Luther feels... Luther looks how I feel right now about seeing that. Anyway, um, moving on. So other updates um, outside of state of play. Lies of P, which is a um, Bloodborne take on Pinocchio, effectively. Um... Got another trailer that has dropped a release window. It's going to be the end of March at some point. I'm just going to skip ahead. Sorry, not the end of March. The end of May? No. It's actually much later than that. It might be August. Anyway, it's it's Bloodborne. It's Bloodborne, but you're Pinocchio somehow. Don't, don't ask too many questions about that. Um, this trailer kind of just shows how there's two kind of warring, somewhat warring factions. You've got whatever this horrible corruption shit is that is sort of taking over these decayed mechanical constructs, and then you've got the constructs themselves. Um, and this guy is a bit crazy. Release month is what they went with. August, it is August. Okay, so it's, it's Baldur's Gate 3 and Lies of P at the same time. Great! That's, that's gonna be a rough August for me. Okay, moving on. Um, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Go backwards. How do I go backwards? Go backwards. Never mind. I will get that video back later. Um, Nine Years of Shadows. Uh, or Nine Years of Shadows. No, Nine Years of Shadows. Uh, so I've been looking at this game for a while. Um, it's like two years now, I think. Just waiting for it to release because it's got a lot of Symphony of the Night to it. And I really like Castlevania. Um, but I really like its art style a lot more. It's very, very colorful. Um, there's armor changes. And I just like the character. Like, you really don't see Halberd as, as a main weapon all that often, so I'm kind of interested to see that. And it might be hard to tell on the small screen, but you do have a teddy bear who follows you around, and they are a sort of spell focus for you. They handle your ranged abilities and stuff. This game has been announced and had its release date changed multiple times, delayed multiple times, so... I'm really hoping this is it. This is the one. This is when it comes out. Uh, so it's meant to come out next month. Uh, it's gonna skip to the end of the trailer. March 27th. So the end of next month. In and around Resident Evil 4 Remake. <sighs> Shit. Because <laughs> I'm definitely gonna be playing that. Alright, anyway. 
elsewhere. Frost Fatales 2023 schedule. So Frost Fatales is a um, woman only um, speedrunning marathon, not, not unlike Games Done Quick. It is actually hosted by Games Done Quick. Uh, Frame Fatales is the main umbrella, and then Frost Fatales and Flame Fatales are the two different marathons they have during uh, the year. So Frost Fatales is already started, started today. Um, and we'll be continuing on for the week. Uh, so there's a couple of different fun speedruns that are here. I particularly like this sleep speedrun. I'd really like to do that one. I'd like to do that one a bit more often. Um, but there are some good games here. Tunic will make for an interesting speedrun. Uh, the horror block is always fun. Silent Hill, Resident Evil. Stardew Valley speedruns are always insane. You know, I'd look to see what, what happens with that. Uh, Untitled Goose Game, just, be just because it's Untitled Goose Game. Okami HD, you don't see very often. Um, and that does have a lot of weird um, glitches and skips just because of the way the game plays. You effectively have control of a calligraphy brush and you can kind of draw kind of strange things and make things happen that you wouldn't probably expect to happen. So it's kind of interesting. I'm only pointing out the ones I'm interested in. Kind of interested in Free Enterprise because this is a very strange mod for Final Fantasy IV. Uh, Final Fantasy IV was released in the West as Final Fantasy II. Um, and is a very, you know, traditional JRPG. It's as traditional as it gets because it's way back on the SNES. Um, but the Free Enterprise is a ROM hack or a mod for uh, the original game. And instead, you get access to the airship, which is a way to kind of go all over the world map. Uh, typically, you get that at the end or close to the end of a Final Fantasy. In this mod, you get it right at the start. Um, and you have access to the entire map right from the beginning. You can do and perform any quest you want right from the offset and go fight the final boss whenever you want. Uh, so it is very open-ended mod to the game. Uh, so I'll be really interested to see how that works. Um, and then Beat Saber. Beat Saber speedrun is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, how does he not break his arms? Or she, he, or she obviously, it's Frame Fatales. How does she not break her arms doing that? So that'll be, that'll be a ridiculous one to see, I think. Um... Also, Steam have taken all of the guesswork out of when their next sale is going to be. They've decided to know, you know what, here's all, here's all our sales. Here's when they're going to be. Um, I've highlighted the, the big ones, um, but they have a bunch of fests, it seems, every other week in between their bigger sales. So spring sale, March 16th to 23rd. Uh, the summer sale will be end of June. The autumn sale will be the end of November. And the winter sale will be the end of December going into January. And then they have a bunch of fests in between. The fests usually focus on one particular genre. Um, like right now they have Mystery Fest going on. Or did. It's over now. Um, where it was focusing on mystery games. Uh, then Puzzle Fest will be puzzle games. Sports Fest will be sports games. Next Fest is games that are coming soon. That kind of thing. Stealth Fest, Stealth Games, Visual Novel, and so on. Um, they're kind of going for the more niche games. Like, you're not going to see Action Adventure Fest because those games always sell well, so they don't need to do that kind of thing. But still, uh, if you wanted to take the guesswork out of it, it's official Steam things. Look it up. Uh, put it in your calendar. Uh, the free game on Epic this week, or coming up this week, should be Rise of Industry, which looks like a, you know, pretty standard management game city management type game put your entrepreneurial skills to the test as you create and optimize intricate production lines whilst keeping an eye on the all-important bottom line as an early 20th century industrialist grow your empire and adapt to unexpected events that could lead to boom or bust so it's like early 1900s type deal um it doesn't look like it's set in the wild west or anything so it's probably like middle america industry boom around then Guess if you're into that kind of thing, uh, I mean, I will add it to my library because it's free, but otherwise I don't think I have any particular interest in it. Anyway, moving on. New releases. So, those are some of the games you can play coming up soon, but what about games you could play right now? Well, we have... We feel it yet? No, not yet, Doom Train Inc. Gotta work on that average viewer's number. Um, Atomic Heart uh, has been likened to Soviet Bioshock. Which I think is... Uh, Soviet Bioshock Infinite, yes. Soviet Bioshock Original, no. Uh, is how I'm looking at it. But again, I haven't played it, so I can't say for definite which one it is. But that is out. It's doing well. Bit of controversy around its developers and so on. Um, you know, you can look into that how you want. In my opinion, uh, I think it's a very surface level look at it. Because it appears to be glorifying the Soviet Union, which obviously right now... 
um, with the war in Ukraine. That's obviously not a good look, but it appears to be glorifying the Soviet Union in the same way Bioshock appeared to be glorifying Ayn Rand. You know, it doesn't play the game. It's very much a critique of it. Um, but whatever. That's uh, Atomic Heart. Uh, this button. I'm gonna. Uh, so Horizon Call of the Mountain. This is more of a catch-all for PSVR 2. PSVR 2 is out uh, at the start of this week or middle of this. Sorry, middle of last week, 22nd. So this is more of a catch-all for all of the PSVR 2 games that came out with it. I'm not going to go through all 40 of them, <laughs> okay? This is their one that they say, you should play this because it shows off all the things, even though that person is holding a bow and arrow at point-blank range. How long are they going to hold this for? Like, a long bow takes a lot of strength to hold. You're not going to be able to hold that indefinitely. It's not a gun. <laughs> it's kind of stupid, but all right. I'm going to let it, let it go. It's fantasy. Let it go. Anyway. Uh, yeah, bunch of PSVR 2 stuff, obviously. Uh, he's just shredded that rope doing that. Okay, anyway, before I get even angrier about it, let's move on. Um, Octopath Traveler 2, sequel to Octopath Traveler 1, uh, as you might imagine. Uh, eight mini campaigns in a gorgeous uh, HD 2D art style. Um, Turn-based JRPG stuff. Uh, it's really good. Octopath Traveler 1, amazing. Octopath Traveler 2 will also be amazing. Uh, if you like those classic JRPGs but really want lush visuals, yeah, check it out. Um, Redemption Reapers kind of snuck up on me because I thought this was going to be a, a little while coming. Uh, Redemption Reapers is effectively goth uh, Fire Emblem, more or less. <laughs> That's the Fire Emblem thing. It's a close-knit group of mercenaries who are, you know, trying, struggling through a war and what have you. They all have their own, like, personalities. There may or may not be a dating sim in the background kind of thing. But, you know, it's goth. Because everyone wears black. And everything is miserable and so on. Uh, yeah, I was expecting this to be much uh, later in the year. But it turns out it's out right now. So I'm going to have to check to see how expensive that is. <laughs> see if I can play it. Um... Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe is a remake of the original Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Um, yeah, well, it's, not, it's not even a remake, really. It's a remaster, I guess. Kirby game, side-scrolling. They're fun. You can't really miss. They're fun games. I think Return to Dreamland is like four-player, and everybody can be Kirby, which is <laughs> hilariously overpowered, but okay. Uh, yep, that's pretty overpowered. Anyway, that's Kirby. And I think that's it. Yes, that is it, because now it is time to talk about the worst parts of video games. The video game industry. So, continuing on from the state of play. Um, Suicide Squad, I said it right, Suicide Squad requires an online connection even in single player. So there was a bunch of FAQs that came out after uh, the presentation in the state of play, you know, answering questions about the battle pass and gross shit like that, because it has a battle pass, even though it's a single player game. Anyway. So Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League will require players to have an internet connection to play even in single player. So part of the FAQ was yes, an internet connection is required to play Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League solo or via online co-op. Why? You know why. You, you know why. It's so they can do the live service shit to you. That's why they want it there. But anyway, no reason is given uh, for the need to have an internet connection. Um, and as pointed out in this article by Jordan Midler, and I would also echo the same issue, should Warner Brothers end support for the game servers in the future, which they will, because they do, um, copies of the game, even physical ones, would become unplayable. Cool. Can't wait for my follow-up to some of, the, some of the greatest superhero games, the Arkham series. The follow-up to it is completely unplayable in five years. Cool. That's great. I'm really feeling good about this game now. Uh, also pointed out by Jordan, recent co-op titles Gotham Knights, same developer, or same publisher, not same developer, same publisher, Monster Hunter Rise and Marvel's Avengers all allow for offline play in single player mode. So why this one? It's particularly interesting since Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad appear to be the same game. Just one of them's about punching and the other one's about shooting. Why does one of them need a constant connection and the other one doesn't? You know why. You know why. Anyway, moving on. Uh, also coming out of the state of play, Baldur's Gate 3 will come to Xbox at some point uh, once split screen works on Series S. So this is kind of a conundrum for Baldur's Gate 
developer Larian Studios is that they would like to release it on Xbox Series X. Um, but part of the criteria for releasing games onto Xbox Series is that they have to work on both. So they have to work on Series X and Series S, and right now, it doesn't work on Series S! Always Online is the laziest DRM. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, it's for DRM, but there are a lot of games that have it for just login. And once you've, you know, once you've pinged the server and confirmed that you are a legit player, uh, you don't have to stay online anymore. Whereas this one, it seems like you have to stay online, which is garbage. Anyway, um, so yeah, so Larian Studios are like, why isn't there an Xbox, or sorry, people were like, why isn't there an Xbox release? Like, we know why you didn't put it in the trailer, because it was state of play. And, you know, you're not going to put an Xbox or a Nintendo brand in a PlayStation presentation. But how come there's no release date on your website? Um, and Larian are like... We're seeing a lot of varied interpretations of what this means, so we wanted to clarify further. We have had an Xbox version of Baldur's Gate 3 in development for some time now. We've run into some technical issues in developing the Xbox ports that have stopped us feeling 100% confident in announcing it until we're certain we found the right solutions. Specifically, we've been unable to get split-screen co-op to work to the same standard on both Xbox Series X and S, which is a requirement for us to ship. So Microsoft do enforce that your game has to work parody effectively on both series. There's no platform exclusivity preventing us from releasing Baldur's Gate 3 on Xbox. They have no deal with Sony or anything like that. Uh, they would like to do it should that be a technical possibility. If and when we do announce further platforms, we want to make sure each version lives up to our standards and expectations. So this is the issue with the Xbox Series S being a budget console. Um, it is like a hundred and hundred and fifty dollars or something cheaper than the Series X. It doesn't have the same specs, processing power, and so on, that kind of stuff. Um, which means the split screen stuff for Baldur's Gate is going to be pretty uh, intensive on the processor because you're effectively running the game twice. Um, if you have played uh, Larian Studios' previous games, the Divinity games, the split screen thing effectively is you can go wherever you want. I mean, yeah, technically you're playing the game in co-op, but you're not tethered. They just go, <laughs> they just go off, play two, effectively play two separate games on the same screen. Um, that kind of thing is going to get pretty intensive on the processor, especially if one of you drops into combat and the other one doesn't. Or if you have two sets of combat going on in completely different areas of the game. That's going to be pretty intensive, so clearly they're having an issue getting that to work on the lower spec Series S. Will they ever get it to work? <clears throat> you saw what happened with Cyberpunk. Not really, is the, is, the, is the answer to that. Did they get a, did CD Projekt then get a deal with Microsoft where they could just say, you know what, it, it, we'll release it on the Series S, but it's shit. <laughs> don't play it there. I don't know. To check if it even is actually available on the Series S. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Nintendo and Microsoft signed a 10 year contract to bring Xbox games to Nintendo consoles. So this is more of a political thing because of the Microsoft ABK um, deal that they're trying to get done and there's been a ton of pushback from industry watchdogs and being like, this will make you too monopolistic. Um, you'll be able to, you know, restrict some very popular titles from appearing on other consoles. You know, it's a big, um, big problem for consumers, basically, because they'll effectively have to buy an Xbox if they want to play Call of Duty. Um, so this is more of Microsoft trying to say, hey, we're not going to be exclusive, you know, we're, we're going to let Nintendo Switch play Call of Duty. Good luck with that. Will it even fit on the Switch? It's like a hundred and something gigs down <laughs> download for Call of Duty. It wouldn't even run. It would almost certainly have to be the cloud version of it. Anyway, um, but part of the messaging was that this is a binding contract. So the issue here was that... Uh, Microsoft had offered a 10-year deal with uh, Sony to bring Call of Duty to PlayStation for the next whatever it was, uh, 10 years, obviously. Um, but the problem was it wasn't binding, you know, it wasn't like a legally enforceable kind of thing because it's a business deal. Business deals aren't necessarily legally enforceable. Um, so the idea of them calling this a binding contract is more messaging than like actually legally binding. Um, it's more messaging to the consumer advocacy groups like the FTC and so on. 
<laughs> Switch has no limit for SD card sizes. Yeah, sure, but where are you going to find like a 250 gig SD card for cheap? Hey, banana, how's it going? Um, no, oh, yes, but that is fair, Doom Training. Um, still, I don't see too many people doing that. Plus, they would have to... They can't make the assumption that the player would have an SD card. They would have to make the assumption that it would fit on a stock Nintendo Switch, um, which it absolutely would not. Anyway, the binding thing is mostly for messaging. Um, I'm good, Banana. Thanks for dropping in. Um, so yeah, Xbox games and Activision titles like Call of Duty, which is a, a little bit more interesting. Like the Call of Duty thing is whatever. That's clearly like the bigger news, but I don't think it'll actually run. Xbox games though, is kind of interesting in that Xbox now owns a lot of games, <laughs> you know? Are we going to see Starfield appear there? Are we going to see Hi-Fi Rush appear there and so on? You know, stuff from Tango Gameworks, stuff from Bethesda, stuff from Obsidian Entertainment, you know, Grounded, maybe, will start showing up on Switch, possible. Uh... Hardware at the same time these games hit on Xbox consoles, so they'd be day and date. Again, I find that unlikely because if the developers who were working on the game right now didn't know that they also had to develop for a Switch, do you think it's going to be good if they have to like crunch to get it out at the same release date? No? <laughs> Is the answer? Microsoft and Nintendo have now negotiated a signed and binding 10-year legal agreement to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo players the same day as Xbox, with full feature and content parity. Bullshit. Uh, so they can experience Call of Duty just as Xbox and PlayStation gamers enjoy Call of Duty. Again, it would have to be the cloud version is the only way it would work. We are committed to providing long-term equal access to Call of Duty to other gaming platforms, bringing more choice to more players and more competition to the gaming market. More competition... Okay. Buying a, a giant publisher and consolidating it into one umbrella Microsoft thing is not more competition. It is less competition. It is less choice. It's also less choice for the developers, because the developers now have to make a decision on, do I want to stick with Microsoft? I may have left a Microsoft company, joined someone else, and now they have bought that company. It's like, fuck's sake, I was trying to get away from you guys. It's even less chance now, because so many developers are all either siloed under Microsoft, or now they're siloed under PlayStation, and so on. Who do you go with? Um, the mention of a binding agreement is new as well, signaling that Activision and Microsoft have now promised Nintendo fans military shooting action. If it is, in fact, legally binding, which I doubt, the business agreement, they're not really legally enforceable. You take them to civil, sure, civil court enforceable possibly, but not legally, or not criminally, I should say. Maybe, I doubt it, we'll see. Um, but also kind of pointed out in this Kotaku article by Levi, Levi, Levi Winslow, um, the last time a Call of Duty game appeared on a Nintendo console was the Wii U, which is more than 10 years ago. So they hadn't been supporting it up till now. Why the change? <laughs> Why the change? Bobby uh, very much did not like Nintendo consoles. Uh, much like... Um... Who's head of EA now? Andy something, I think. He also hates the Nintendo consoles. is why you don't see too many EA games on them. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, sticking with Nintendo, Nintendo confirms it will not attend E3 2023, so this isn't necessarily big news in and of itself. Um, what's bigger news is that this is now Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft not attending E3. They're all effectively going to be doing their own thing. It seems the only publisher who is currently signed up for E3 is Ubisoft. Which, it, might, it may become the Ubisoft show <laughs> in that case. Which is not surprising, since E3 had to be shuttered because of COVID. A lot of um, publishers had started doing their own online presentations. Like, Nintendo Direct had already been there for a while. State of Play started showing up. Xbox have their own thing that I forget what it's called. Um, they've effectively done the E3 part, you know? The part that everyone kind of tuned in for in the first place, and they can do, do it themselves on their own calendar. It's not being cannibalized by 
news out of Nintendo or news out of Microsoft, you know, they're not they're not having to worry about that kind of thing, so it's not a shock. But it does kind of signal that maybe E3, and they do say this every year, but maybe maybe this is the year E3 is finally dead. Who knows? Um, Tango Gameworks founder Shinji Mikami to leave the studio. So, um, but this was then later confirmed by Bethesda. So I'm writing today to let you know that studio head Shinji Mikami has decided to leave Tango Gameworks in the coming months. Mikami-san has been a creative leader and supportive mentor to young developers at Tango for 12 years through his work on the Evil Within franchise, Ghostwire Tokyo, and of course Hi-Fi Rush. And then before that, he was director on, like, Resident Evil's 1-4. to Um... This is kind of a big deal for Tango, but I think... So the rumor... Okay, the rumor was that uh, Shinji Mikami had wanted to leave Tango ever since it was bought by Bethesda. Um, mostly because they had started pushing back on the games that he wanted to make. This is a rumor now, we don't actually know this. Um, he had wanted to make some kind of futuristic, um, survival horror type thing. So Evil Within, but like cyberpunk time. Um, and for whatever reason, Bethesda said, no, 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 don't do that. You gotta make all the things people know you for instead. Don't do anything new. Um... And effectively, it seemed that Shinji Mikami was staying with Tango Gameworks to sort of protect the company. And, like, as long as he was there, his name was associated with it, they probably wouldn't shut it down. But now he feels confident that Evil Within 2 did pretty good, Hi-Fi Rush did pretty good. I think at this point he kind of feels like, it's okay, I can probably go now. I think they're good. They're in good hands. Again, that's all rumor speculation. Um... He doesn't really talk much on Twitter, so I have no idea what the deal is with him. Even that statement didn't come from him. It came from somebody else at um, Bethesda to say it. Who knows? Still, it'll be interesting to see um, what he does in the future. And then last, we don't really talk about the mobile games all that much. Mostly because I don't feature them and don't play them or anything like this. But I just wanted to drop this one in because it highlights... It highlights a direction that... The ma like the major games industry could go down. And I say major games industry, even though mobile mobile games probably make more than they do. Um, basically, the free to play microtransaction battle pass, all that shit, started in mobile games. So anytime you see a weird trend starting in mobile game development, you gotta be worried that it'll end up in, you know, the the bigger uh, home console sphere. So Rovio delists the original Angry Birds due to impact on free-to-play variants. What kind of impact do you think it had? Do you think it was favorable? Do you think it was, hey, people aren't paying, you know, five bucks to get extra energy to keep flinging birds at pigs. Instead, they just they just paid one buck to get the whole game and then never pay us any more money. Because that's, that's what it is. It's that one. It's, it's stopping us from making more money. Um, so I've lost my highlights on this because Destructoid is going to be a Destructoid, but the gist of it is they are going to delist the original Angry Birds from um, the Play Store, the Google Play Store, and they're going to rename the one on the App Store because they can't delist it on the App Store. They're going to rename it to something stupid. What is it? Red's First Flight is what they're going to rename it to. So you're like, why rename it? That's kind of weird. The reason they're renaming it is so that when you search... Angry Birds on the App Store, the original game won't come up. Their new free-to-play, you know, nickel and dime, give me five bucks to keep playing versions, they'll come up first. It's an extremely cynical way to do it. Um, we want people to keep playing our live Angry Birds slingshot games, such as Angry Birds 2, Angry Birds Friends, and Angry Birds Journey, where our goal every day is to milk money out of you. No, it's to craft the best possible experience to milk money out of No, the best possible experience for the players to pay us money. No, wait, shit. Anyway, that is the deal. They are delisting the game and renaming it so you can't find it in search so that you will be bought over to their ones that make them more money. Instead of the one that you can just buy. Just buy for a buck. And have it. And be done with it. So, I'm kind of hoping this is just them. It's just Rovio being being shitheads, and it's not a trend where you're gonna see them sunsetting the popular game <laughs> that doesn't cost a shit ton of money to play, versus no, play our shit game that's clearly a money cash in. 
anyway. Kinda hoping we don't see that. Really hope, really hope I'm not gonna see that in, you know, coming up on Street Fighter or whatever. Anyway, we're gonna deal with Street Fighter 2. You'll never get to play Street Fighter 2 ever again. Now you gotta play Street Fighter 8. Where you gotta pay us a million bucks every day. Anyway, that was the news. This cable doesn't want to stay up there. That was the news for February 20th to the 26th, um, 2023. State of play was over, uh, overall kind of disappointing. Um, there was some good news there. Baldur's Gate has a proper release date, even though it's literally the worst version of that release date it could be. Um, everything about Suicide Squad kills the Justice League just confirmed that it was going to be bad. And, they, and it is. There's no getting away from it now. It's like a solid 30 minutes there. Of it just showing its whole ass to everybody. Um, the Resi 4 remake trailer, I didn't want to see. I'm sad about Suicide Squad. Yeah, Banana, me too. I was really hoping it was going to be something good. The Resident Evil 4 remake trailer that was shown off in State of Play, uh, it looks really good. Like, I've been trying to avoid watching anything about it, but now I, like, I'm still getting incredibly hype about that. Um, the VR games, it's hard to tell because... You can't really show footage of a VR game properly, like the way you'll actually experience it in VR. So it's hard to tell if that's actual gameplay or if it's scripted or if it's, you know, a mock-up or a, a bullshot as we used to call them back in the day. Um, who knows? It looks interesting, but I guess we'll see. Um, I can't think of anything else there that was there. Lies of P coming out the same time as Baldur's Gate 3 is, is going to be pain. That's going to be painful for me. Um, and Nine Years of Shadows, maybe this this time, this time it'll actually come out and not be delayed again. It would really be nice. Um, but anyway, we're going to move on to um, the channel update. So what is happening on the channel uh, last week and this week? So here is our roadmap -y type deal. Again, the gold wedge on the corner means it's a full let's play. The green ticks means the game has appeared on the channel and is complete. Uh, the yellow dots means it's on the channel currently and is in progress. Grey clocks, it's on the way, and if it doesn't have an icon, I don't know. Eventually it'll get here. Anyway, um, Sherlock Holmes Chapter One. Yeah, that's there. It's, well, you'll you'll be you want to might might want to hang around on Wednesdays then, banana. Um, so last week we finished um, play full screen. Full screen, there we go, okay. So last week we finished uh, Deliver Us Mars, um, end up being three streams, is really good. Like, janky as, janky as fuck, yeah, and the character, <laughs> the character models don't look particularly great, particularly in the face, but it's a really good story. Uh, it's really well acted, and it's not like everything's tied up in a nice bow, you know, there's still a lot of moral gray areas that we're gonna have to deal with there. Um, I really hope they get to continue the story, because it's been very interesting up until now. Um, I don't know about the puzzle stuff, it's just reminding me at this trailer, because some of the puzzles are a bit weird. Um, but the actual story, which is kind of the whole deal for Foley Fables, the hair was weird. Yes, the hair is very strange. Um, particularly facial hair is very odd. It's like, it seems like it's modeled inside the skull and then just kind of protrudes out, which is a really weird way to do it, but okay. It's I guess is sort of how hair works. It's inside your skin and then comes out. Anyway, it's weird. Uh, that was Deliver Us Mars. Um, after that though, so Resident Evil 4, we have finished the main campaign. Uh, we finished the main campaign on Monday. Um, and I have begun... Um, I have begun Separate Ways, which is a, a separate side story where you play as Ada Wong uh, and you go through all of her um, actions while the main campaign was going on. As you play the main campaign, she kind of pops in and out. Um, so in separate ways, you can kind of see what she was doing effectively at the same time Leon was playing around. We played a little bit of that yesterday. Uh, we got an imp impromptu Spanish lesson from Melwin. Thanks for that. We've discovered that the enemy names sound really good until you know what, what they actually translate to. And then they're like, these are really dumb names. <laughs> and I think uh, learning that ganado means cattle is extremely cruel to the ganado. But anyway, it's very funny. But we're going to be continuing separate ways on Monday. Possibly we'll finish it then. And at that point, we'll be all good for Resi 4 Remake when it comes out at the end of March. Um, keep pressing the wrong button. Uh, 
Uh, after that, so Wednesday, the next Foley Fables will be um, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, which I've never played. So I'm really looking forward to this. I've always wanted to play the Sherlock Holmes games, but they always looked kind of intimidating, you know, like their puzzles and stuff. Any time of gameplay I've seen, and to be fair, it's probably because I drop in in the middle of a puzzle instead of like at the beginning when I know what's happening. But yeah, so Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is effectively a reboot of Frogwares' Sherlock Holmes games that they've made quite a few of at this point. Um, and the reboot is to kind of go back to like a prototype Sherlock Holmes. You know, it's like his first case kind of thing. So you're still young and sexy and so on. Um, so we're going to play a little bit, or not a little bit, we're going to play the whole thing, if I can, if my brain doesn't shut down in the middle of it. Um, and this is also to sort of get, um, to get ready for Sherlock Holmes, uh, The Awakened, or Awakening, something like that, which is actually the one I actually really want to play, <laughs> because it's got, uh, Lovecrafty and stuff, and an Eldritch Horrors and stuff, I really, <laughs> Sherlock was always sexy, okay, fair enough. Okay, young and sexy, instead of middle-aged and sexy, and then old and sexy. Um, yeah, The Awakened, or The Awakening, I forget what it's called, uh, is a kind of crossover between Lovecraft and uh, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and I like the Elder Tower stuff, so I'm kind of interested to play that. So I kind of need to play this one first, because it's a sequel. So I gotta do that. <laughs> and then Dead and Sexy, yes. <laughs> and then Resurrected, and then Zombie Sexy, and then Vampire Sexy. Um, after that, uh, Breath of the Wild continuing... Um, Breath of the Wild last week hit on the same day as State of Play, so we didn't get like a uh, like a three hour, four hour stream that I normally do for Breath of the Wild. It was only about two hours. I think it might have been less than two hours. Um, but we weren't doing much story-wise. We were just bombing around the um, northern areas where it's all very, very cold and getting lost in a maze. Um, or not lost. I, d I used the procedure. You put your hand on the wall and don't take your hand off the wall and just keep walking. <laughs> there you go. You'll solve the maze eventually. Except we didn't because it's a circle. <laughs> so I had, ended up having to break my rule to actually solve the maze, which would suggest it's not actually a maze. But anyway, moving on, we're going to be continuing that. Uh, this time we'll make our way towards um, the Gerudo and possibly do the Gerudo Divine Beast as well. I, maybe we might be able to squeeze in the actual Divine Beast fight. Um, but that is the plan for this week. And then... Uh, Friday. So Friday's a kind of, it's a bit up in the air right now. Um, I've kind of put in Scars Above as more of a placeholder. So this is a game that's releasing next week. It's kind of a... How to explain it? It's a third-person shooter. Very close range. Um, it's got a bit of remnant from the ashes to it, if you've played that. Um, so it's like enemies are kind of melee-based, but you are... Um, a ranged fighter, so there's a lot of dodging around melee guys trying to punch you while you try to shoot them back and that kind of thing, but it's set in space in the future, but there's also some weird metaphysics shit going on at the same time. I don't know, it's got an interesting premise, that's kind of why I wanted to play it, but again, this is more subject to how expensive it's going to be. Because um, I also wanted to do Atomic Heart, but that's like $70, and I, I just can't stretch that kind of money right now, so we'll see. We might end up being something else in instead of Scars Above. Anyway, we'll move on. Um, that is the placeholder for Friday. And then Saturday, um, I'm looking to do a PSVR 2. I'll play a couple of games, um, and we'll just kind of get a gist of how it works, and how if I needed to do a stream, or like a full Let's Play of a VR game, how would that work? Um, so yeah, it's kind of going to be mostly like showing off the PSVR 2. You know, some of the different games that come with it. Luckily, there's a bunch of demos for it as well, so I don't have to shell out too much. Um, and then also for me to kind of test how a stream with VR would work. I did a stream once before with VR. I did Batman Arkham VR. Um, and my mic was muted for the whole thing. So, so I kind of like, kind of don't want that to happen again. Uh, not being able to see chat, etc., when you have the headset down and that kind of thing. So there's lots of rookie mistakes in that, but I'm, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen again. Um, anyway, that'll be the, the idea. I haven't nailed down what games are going to be yet. Um, it'll be the demos. We'll do Her the Horizon Call of the Mountain and Resident Evil because they're the bigger ones. Um, and then after that, I'm not sure. No Man's Sky, I think, has a new update for PSVR 2. So we'll look at that because I already have it. Um... 
possibly res or tetris or something like that as well i would like to look at like a chill game too like not all the high action ones um there's one that looks like you just do 3d jigsaws which looks pretty chill i can't imagine it, it probably won't be very fun to watch but we'll see we'll see how long it takes to until the other people get bored watching it i guess anyway that is the plan for next week so monday tomorrow uh or today if you're watching on youtube uh resident evil 4 uh, possibly finish it off separate ways, which is Ada's story Wednesday, the new Foley Fable, um, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, uh, so that'll be a full playthrough of that. Um, Thursday, continuing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, we're gonna uh, head towards Gerudo. Um, Scars Above, as I said, placeholder for Friday. If it's cheap-ish, we'll do that, if it's not, we'll do something else. Um, and PSVR 2 showcase on Saturday. Um, we might start that one earlier, just so we have a bit more time with it. Uh, and then we'll be right back around to the weekly news recap on Sunday. So, that's what's happening on the channel next week. Um, I'm going to head off now because I actually haven't had any eat yet today. So I'd like to I'd like to do that. That would be a good thing to do. Um, thanks for dropping into the chat. Um, Melwan, Doom Training, and Takeda Banana. I would appreciate it. Uh, it's nice always to have people you can chat to down here. Uh, bon appetit. <laughs> we'll go have to find out what's actually in my fridge first. Um, what is in my fridge? Okay, I may not be having lunch. I might be having dinner. I have to hang on for dinner instead. Anyway, um, yeah, that's the plan for next week. Um, what was I going to say? Yes, if you want to catch up on any of the games we had played uh, up until now, you can find them over on the YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash doomtrain5. Um, and if you want to hang out and chat with all these fine folks like Takeda Banana, Melwin, and Doom Training, you can do that over at twitch.tv slash doomtrain5. Right, I'm going to head off. Have a good rest of your day, or evening, or whatever it is you're doing, um, and I will see you tomorrow for Resi 4. Bye-bye. <laughs>